Hello, my friend. It's Marta. Thank you for coming back. If this is your first time here, welcome to Cuban Curls, and thank you so much for stopping by. Today, I have a couple of Trash to Treasures. This is actually a video that I never finished editing. I filmed this back in the fall, and I don't know why I didn't upload it, but I want to share it with you today. So let's just get started. I love to shop at Habitat for Humanity, restore most of my furniture in the living room, dining room area of my home are from Habitat for Humanity. I love refurbishing furniture. Really a great way to save money, but more importantly, all the proceeds from restore sales support Habitat for Humanity's mission, which is building affordable housing around the world. So I picked up this table there for $10. Truth be told, I was very inspired by a YouTuber and her name is Christina Mascari. I will leave a link to her video down in the description box. I was very impressed with the way that she made over a side table very much like this one. The first thing I'm going to do is remove any of the dust with a damp cloth. Now she uses mineral spirits to clean hers. I didn't have any, so I just used plain old water. Now I'm only going to sand the top of the table and to do that I'm going to wrap a piece of sandpaper around a Dollar Tree sponge because my sponge was actually worn out. And doing it this way is actually easier for my hands. And I obviously wasn't paying attention because she also says that you need to go a little deeper if you have gouges. I had plenty of them and I didn't go deep enough, but hey, it's okay. It was my first time. Christina's video was a beginner's tutorial for gel stain and for chalk paint. Now I've used chalk paint a lot, but this was my first time using gel stain and I was very intimidated. Gel stain is thick, so you have to mix it well and it's recommended that you use a sponge brush to apply it. I also forgot to mention that I'm using black gel stain. It's all I had and I really like black and white anyway, so it was all good. Now, when I paint, I just try and give it a very thin coat, trying not to, you know, keep going over the same spot over and over again. You just want to keep moving across the table and you are going to see some wood peeking through because the first layer is going to be a very thin layer, but no worries. You're going to come back. I let this dry for 24 hours and then I came back to do a second coat. And when I come back the next day, the first thing I do is just dust it off to get any of the dust that could have accumulated overnight. And then I go in with the second coat and you'll see that the second coat actually takes care of covering up any of that wood that's peeking through. And again, I had to let it dry for 24 hours, but the next day I come back to use some polyurethane. It's water-based. I mix it using one of those paint stirrers. You're not supposed to shake it or else you get bubbles. So just remember that. I like using this. It's matte finish. I don't like, you know, shiny polyurethane. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go with the grain and I'm going to use a sponge brush. Now, you know, I'm no expert at putting polyurethane on. You're supposed to go from one end of your piece, whatever it is that you're polyurethaning, to the other with a straight line and then not go over that same spot that you just went over, but I do it all the time. You know, I'm just like thinking that it doesn't have enough, so I don't know, but it came out okay. I gave this two coats of polyurethane, letting it dry. I think it was about six hours in between because I was doing other stuff. But on the can, it says that you wait two hours before you apply your second coat. I let this dry for 24 hours. I was in the middle of doing a lot of things that day, so it gave it a good amount of time to dry. And now I'm going to go in and chalk paint the bottom half, the apron, the legs, you know, the bottom half <laughs> with some Rust-Oleum white linen chalked paint. I mixed it with some water because my friend Christina said that that's the way you're supposed to do it. She doesn't know me, but she said that's the way you're supposed to do it. I use a chalk brush, a chalk paint brush. I don't know. I just don't like these chalk paint brushes. I, I have yet to find a really good one. The ones I have lose their bristles all the time. I find myself having to pick them out of the furniture and then having to repaint. So it's a real pain. If you have a better suggestion for me, please let me know in the comments. 
Now I'm not going for a very smooth look when I chalk paint. I just paint every which way. It may not be the right way, but it's my way. <laughs> it's the way that I do it. It's the way that I know how. A lot of people are intimidated to chalk paint, but I always tell you chalk paint is very forgiving and you really can't mess it up. Did I just say mess it up? Mess it up. So now I'm just going to go ahead and paint the apron and the legs. I'm also going to remove the hardware from the draw and I'm going to paint the face of it. That's it. Just the front part. First coat is going to be very see-through. You're still going to see the wood popping through. I'm going to go ahead and prop it up on these wood blocks. And the reason I do that is because I usually get cat hair. <laughs> I have a cat. And I get cat hair in my furniture. So I've learned that I do have to prop the furniture up when I'm painting because my cat loves to be, you know, hanging out with me when I do my crafting. And after that first coat dries, I just go in and give everything a second coat and it manages to cover everything up really nicely. When everything is dry, I'm going to go ahead and put this cup pull on. I got this from Home Depot for a couple of bucks and the color is Cocoa Bronze. To put the pull on the draw front, my husband had this handy tool. It's called the Line Right from Home Depot as well, and it was only a couple of bucks. And what made it easy for us, or easier, was that the hole in the middle was already there, so all we had to do was just measure the pull. It has holes for all different sizes, and then my husband just drilled the hole so that we can put the screws in. I'm going to line the inside of the draw with some contact paper from the Dollar Tree. But what I like to do, because I always mess this up, is that I go along the edge inside of the draw with some white paint. In this case, white paint, because the paper is white and black. And for some reason, I always manage to mess this up. I can never get my contact paper straight. And since the paper's edge is primarily white, if I paint the edge of the draw white, then if I'm crooked, <laughs> you can't tell. I measure the inside of the draw and then I cut my contact paper to size. And then I'm going to lay my contact paper down. Now, I'm no genius. I'm sure you've seen this a million times. I line up the contact paper with the edge of the draw and then start pulling the backing from underneath and then just start smoothing it down with my hand. You can use a tool, you can use a credit card, you can use whatever you have on hand. I just use my hand. And this thing still came out crooked. Thank God I painted it, but it's a draw. And if you come to my house and you open this drawer and you tell me that the paper is crooked, <laughs> I'm going to kick you out. Just kidding. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was built bound. All the odds were against me. So I picked up the page, and now I'm in the rage. Give me some space. I'm about to explode. If you've been with me a long time and you are a real OG and a real fan of Cuban curls, <laughs> then you might have seen my Clean With Me video, my first and last Clean With Me video on this channel. I bought a dough box. Now you can see how much these things go for. About $500. I picked mine up from the ReStore for only 20 bucks. And what I did was I painted this 
completely white and I left it in my living room for a while. I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. The outside of the dough box was like completely not completely. I wouldn't say it was jacked up. The inside was pristine. If you don't know, dough boxes are used or were used back in the day for proofing bread dough. You know, the box was filled with flour, then water, and then the mixture was kneaded, all those things, and then rise. Anyway, the lid was there to keep, you know, the vermin out and the bugs. Yuck. So I scored this beautiful piece for $20.00. And I will have you know that when I saw the price, <laughs> I about nearly fainted and wouldn't let it go. Anyway, I remembered that I had a stencil and I used some Scotch Spray Mount. It's really, really good when you're putting stencils down onto something. It really adheres well to the piece of furniture or whatever it is that you're stenciling. Anyway, I picked up this stencil online. It's a French word stencil. And it's very simple, very nice and simple. I didn't want to, you know, paint this another color. I didn't want to ruin it by putting like too much stuff all over it. Some people may think that I ruined it because I painted it white. But the thing is that if I ever get sick of it, I could always sand this piece down. This is real, real wood. So I just grab a sponge brush and some black paint and I start you know, sponging, is that what you call it, um, onto the stencil. And I make sure that there isn't a lot of paint. I kind of wanted it to be distressed. I didn't want it to be perfect. And that's exactly the way that it turned out. I truly love this piece so, so much. I get a lot of compliments and it's just one of my favorite pieces. <music> So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and helps me bring you more content. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you will know when I upload. I love you and I will see you soon, my friends.